Today we're going to cover the basics of inbound marketing. My name is Lorraine Ball and I'm going to be your host today. I'm a marketing strategist and I have been working with inbound marketing and digital marketing for um, well, quite a few years now, and my team at Roundpeg continues to offer these services to companies that are looking to use digital marketing to grow. So what is inbound marketing? The simple definition is that it is a process designed to help you attract, engage, prospects and get them to a point that they are ready to do business with you. But inbound marketing doesn't really stop at the sale. It continues as you move through building a long-term relationship with that customer. So let's start with the first piece of it. How do you attract prospects? Will you use digital marketing to answer questions and solve problems that your customers have? You drive action by providing valuable, relevant, and consistent content, blog posts, videos, how-to guides, helpful information that encourages people to dive into your website, to sign up for your newsletter, to learn more about what it is you do and do well. The goal of inbound marketing is to move prospects through this sales funnel. They may start out as a stranger when they come to your website, but inbound marketing attracts their attention and then this process drives them through as they become a more qualified prospect, customer, and by staying in touch after the sale, hopefully a raving fan. This statistic is probably one of the most relevant statistics for every inbound marketer. 57% of purchase decisions are made before a customer even talks to a supplier. And this number continues to grow up, go up every year. And so what that means is it's not that customers are making uninformed decisions. They're just learning more about the products they want to buy and the services that companies offer. And they make up their mind before they even have a conversation with you. As you move prospects through this funnel, these four actions, attract, engage, close, and delight, kind of fit into the funnel right here. You move someone from being a stranger to a visitor when you attract them to your website. They move into that prospect phase when you start engaging them with interesting content. Between prospect and customer, you start to close that sale. That's how you, you, and you can use digital marketing at each step along the way. And then the follow-up will delight that customer and make them a raving fan. Inbound elements. What are the pieces of a great inbound campaign? Well, it starts with a well-defined audience. And once you define that audience, you can begin constructing an offer they can't refuse. You create a landing page where they can access that information. You have to drive people to that landing page to get them to sign up. And then you want to have automated responses that go to people as a follow-up after they access your information. So let's start with a clearly defined audience. Now I do an entire webinar just on the topic of building an inbound audience. But I'll give you the short version now. The first thing you want to do is build a persona of your target customer. And yes, I know you have lots of different customers, blah, 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 blah. You cannot build an offer that is going to appeal equally to everyone. When you try to do that, you end up watering down that offer 
and it's okay for everybody, but it's not really great for anyone. And so start, stop thinking about your customers as a generic customer and start thinking about them as real people. I love this example from a shoe company. They've identified a particular customer. They know a little bit about her age, gender, where she lives, what's important to her. They know what she's trying to achieve. And I love that in this persona, they even have a couple of quotes from real customers who are kind of like this customer. When you define a customer this specifically, now you can begin to go, well, what's important to her? What frustrates her? When you can identify these problems, now you can create marketing campaigns, but you can also create specific offers that are going to speak to her needs, things she's interested in. And this doesn't work just for consumer products. It works equally well for B2B products. And so here, when you're building that persona, you're probably going to focus a little bit more on job roles, um, where they go for information, what kind of information. And this is uh, also, again, much more important in the B2B arena. How do they want to how do they want to be contacted? Because the more you understand about your prospective customers, the more you can target the information for them. And then what is their problem and how do you help? Until you know who they are, you don't really know what the problem is. It's really hard to build a compelling offer without that. Now, we'll talk more about what you offer in a moment, but this gives you kind of the basics. The general, in almost every instance, the best offer is short, simple to create, which is good for you, simple to consume, which is good for the customer, and it leaves prospects wanting more. When I first started doing inbound marketing, I would spend an inordinate amount of time creating these wonderful white papers, 20, 30 pages. And it would take me forever to create them. And people would download them and that was great. But I had two problems. The first is they took too long to create. And the second is I put so much information in it, there was nothing left for people to reach out or sign up or want to learn more. When I made newer versions, now my, my most of my downloads are two to four pages tops. And there's always a link if you want more, here's where you go next. Your landing pages. Um, some of the best offers are things that inform prospective customers that help them get ready to buy from you. This is a great example of that kind of tool. This is for a flooring company. And we did a series of these on carpet buying, flooring buying, tile buying, how to save money, realtor guide to flooring. And in each instance, you can see we tell people what they're going to get, and then we capture their contact info. I love this. Um, I love this example as well. Here, um, it's kind of it's it's a little bit edgy, but it's really good because they figured out the thing people are are they have figured out what their customer's problem is. The problem is that people don't really know what inbound marketing is. And so what they did is they offered an inbound marketing guide. The headline is catchy. And again, this is, I think this one's a little bit long, but they tell you this is what you're getting into. But the guide is designed to answer those questions. What, what is inbound marketing? 
Think about in your business, what are the questions that you get asked over and over again? And can you create an offer, something people can download, a worksheet, a workbook, a resource guide that answers that question? You can provide resources. And this one made me laugh because obviously my company is a digital toolbox and here they've got something they're offering was the digital marketing toolbox. What I liked about this and, and why I use this particular example is simple to create, simple to consume, really easy. Give us your email address, boom, download it right now. I like some of these other things that they tell you are in the toolbox. Five minutes or less, 60 second plan, ultimate guide. So they really give you a feel for what's, what do you get if you give them just your email address? What makes an effective offer? Specific. Don't Give me something that's so broad, again, that it's designed to appeal to everybody. Solve one problem, answer one question, and do it well. Immediate gratification, and I'll show you some examples where I think people miss the boat on this. If I give you my email address, I want, I, I want whatever it is I'm downloading now. And I've seen a lot of people who will say, when you hit submit, hey, check your email for our guide. And I know they're doing it because they don't want people giving them bogus email addresses. But the truth is, it doesn't cost you anything for somebody to download it. And if they're going to give you a bogus email and you force them to give you a real email, they're only going to unsubscribe as soon as they get it anyway. So it doesn't really matter. But what this two-step process does is it frustrates the people who really want whatever it is you're offering. That's not to say you don't follow up with an email afterwards, but give people that immediate gratification. Rapid consumption. Again, a 50-page guide, well, that sounds great, but I'm never going to read that. Five things you have to do today. Okay, that's a manageable list. I can handle that. It needs to have a high perceived value. So a little bit of graphic design, a little bit of attention to detail makes the information feel more relevant. But again, it doesn't have to be very expensive to produce, and I'm going to show you some examples of that. And what it does is it shifts the relationship. You go from being just another website to a resource for them. And so now they're considering you a subject matter expert. So what do you know? What makes a good offer? The things that you know the prospective customers might not. One is industry data, trends, tips, information that you have compiled on new legislation or new technology that they can get access by giving you their email address. The second is survey results. They don't even have to be really big or long surveys, Create a survey, put together a little PowerPoint presentation, save it as a PDF, and offer that information. People love to compare themselves to other people, and so they always like to see survey results. How-to guides, case studies, how to use your information, white papers, workbooks. We do a ton with checklists, 10 things to do before you do X, Y, or Z. Um, scorecards. This is another kind of part of human nature where people really want to know how do they match up to other companies or other individuals like themselves. Workbooks, tools, you name it. And the offers can be simple. This is, I, I thought this was a great little tool. The company that put it together, it's really not much more than a simple spreadsheet 
but they put their logo on top. They have some hyperlinks on the bottom. And when you download it, you're going to use this tool because you're downloading it to use it. And you're going to be reminded of the company that created it over and over and over again. One of the coolest tricks are what I call the collections and tools. So many of you have probably been blogging for quite a while. We discovered that even though we might have eight or 10 blog posts on the same or related topics on our website, if we would publish a collection, people would give us their email to essentially give them the same information that was already on the blog. Why? Because we put it in a convenient form that was easy for them to download. The best example of this are the cookbooks that we started creating for Randall Beans. They don't sell product on their website. And so the purpose of the website is to help encourage more people to use Randall Beans in their recipes. But lots of people are like, well, I don't know what to cook with beans. And so we started actually working with recipe developers to create a list of potential recipes. And we share them on the blog every every two or three weeks. There's a new recipe. And periodically, we put together a cookbook. It's simply a roundup of those recipes bundled with a pretty cover and a social media share. Does this technique work? Oh, my goodness, yes. When we started doing this with Randall Beans, they had 250 people on their email list. The last time I checked, they had over 8,000 people. And we clean that list out periodically of people who no longer open the emails. 8,000 people open an email from them every month. And of that, about a thousand now sign up for the recipe of the week and all because we publish these cookbooks and invite people to sign up to receive the next one. Okay, so you have created your offer. Now what you want to do is create a landing page where people can go to exchange their contact information for whatever it is you're creating, whatever it is you're offering. The role of the landing page is to lead people to yes. So what's on a perfect landing page? It doesn't have to be really long. You want to have a smart headline. You want to have some kind of image, some picture that draws people in. A sign-up form maybe a testimonial and a big honking call to action button. Great landing pages can be short and sweet. This is one of my favorites. Fun headline, nice picture, a promise, get my guide and your email address. Now, if you're going to create a page like this, you're probably going to have to do some selling off-site. You're going to have to have some social shares with some explanation that kind of primes the pump. So by the time people get here, they know what they're looking for. If you haven't done that kind of pre-selling and you're just linking to the page, you may have to have more information further down on the page and repeat this CTA further down. You have to decide how much information you really need on the landing pages. Because the truth is, for every field you add, you reduce the number of people that are going to fill out the form. This is a great landing page. First name, email, that's it. Yes or no thanks. Very, very simple. Now, this is not for everyone. Here, 
You've already pre-sold it. You're driving people here. They're going to get the information or they're not, and you're done. This is a little bit more overwhelming. There's text, there's a video, but what they're selling is very specific. It is a free Facebook ad evaluation. This is something that is going to require a time commitment on the part of the company that has created this. And if you are going to give away free services, not just a free download, but your offer is really free services, you want a little bit more in exchange. You're going to want name, phone number, email, and of course, in this case, the link to the web address. There will be fewer people that fill this out than this, but the people that do this are going to be more qualified for your services. So it's a trade-off. How important is the information versus how many people do you really want to fill out the form? So as you're building your landing page, couple here are some tips. The first is the landing page has one purpose. Do not clutter it up with the offer at the top, a lot of information, and four more links to other places. No, a landing page has one purpose. There are even people that won't put the navigation or links to anywhere else on the website. You came to the landing page, either do what you came for or leave. It's okay either way. Single focus, uncluttered. Don't give me a lot of choices. Limit your navigation and also consider, um, depending on how important it is to you that people fill this out, as they navigate away, there are some really great plugins for WordPress that'll just pop up with a last minute, hey, you forgot to fill out the form. Do you really want to leave? It's a little annoying. Don't do it on mobile, but on a desktop, it's perfectly okay. So if you build it, they'll come, right? Mm, maybe, mm, maybe not. If you don't actively promote your offer, no one is going to find it. And so you need to think about where is your prospective customer? Where are they hanging out? Because that's where you need to promote your offer. And the best way to do it is with some social shares where you, again, you'll notice these are pretty simple. There's not a lot going on here. The tile flooring guide, download now, company logo. Information on the class, register now. This one, I would have made this button a little bit bigger. That's probably my one thing I don't love here. Share these. Um, these days, uh, even adding a little bit of motion, transforming these pictures into like an animated GIF can drive quite a lot of traffic to your website for, for people to come and get whatever it is you're offering. You want to create your social shares in different shapes and sizes. Maybe you, maybe you have a big following on Instagram and you want to create a story or maybe Pinterest. And you want to have internal links. So if someone is on one page on your website, you want to offer them a chance to get the information. Maybe they're browsing different flooring colors and types. Well, you want to schedule a consultation, or maybe instead you do a link here that links to the flooring guide, or the carpet guide, or the tile guide, or simply the money-saving guide. And once you get their email address, that is not the, that is not the end. It is the beginning. And you use email to close the loop, to follow up with prospective customers, to get them to be customers, and follow up with customers to keep them engaged after the sale. 
50% of the people who fill out a form on a website or download something may be qualified, but not ready to buy. So that person that downloaded something from your website in January may not be ready to call you until June or July, but they will have forgotten about you if you don't follow up. I had somebody we just started work. Well, we actually were, we're close to finishing his website now. He downloaded something from my website four years ago. And he's been reading my newsletter, maybe dropping in on a class once or twice. And we just sold him and are wrapping up actually a, a website for him. We would never have had that opportunity had we not stayed in touch. This is a great example of a lead nurturing campaign. And what you will see is there's not a lot of styling. They look like plain text emails. They hit the inbox. They're not over formatted. And so people will just read them quickly and move on. This is um, a follow-up to someone who has uh, signed up for a free account of software. Hey, I noticed you signed up and wondered what, you know, what brought you to Clievo. Um, I'm happy to call, hop on a call if I can help. A couple days later, um, our customers tell us this is why they do this. If it's of interest, let's chat. Um, and then three days later, companies have worked with you know, we've worked with companies in a wide range of industries. I, I'd love, you know, we've had some great results. I'd love to see if we can help. And then before I throw in the towel, one more chance to connect. Now, this is specifically for software, but I do something similar with emails. I have campaigns set up for um, floor, my, my flooring customer because that's a long process because people browse and they kick the tires and they think about it and think about it some more. The nice thing is you send out these emails and they're basically doing the work when you're doing something else. You have an opportunity to see who's opening the emails, are they clicking on links if you've put a link in the email? And you can still call and follow up in between. But this way, they don't forget about you before they're ready to buy. Industry data says that you have between a four and ten times greater response rate for what are called lead nurturing emails rather than a standalone email blast. So if people sign up for your new, uh, I'm sorry, not for your newsletter. If people download something from your website, you are going to get a much better response if you send them a targeted email campaign that is based on what they downloaded rather than just dropping them directly into your email newsletter system. When you are working on building your email automation campaign, remember that the buying cycle drives the timing. How often should you send a follow-up email? Well, that depends on how often um, or how long a buying cycle. For example, Flooring and carpeting can be two to three months. And so you have some time to space out the communication. Conversely, heating and air conditioning, people are in the, uh, probably in the shopping mode two to three days. So you got to hit them, boom, boom, boom. With uh, consulting services, we typically find after that initial communication, every two to three days, and then going longer if we haven't heard from them. Each email should be short, single focused, text only, or limited design. Save the over-designed emails for the newsletter. And one call to action. Do not send an email that has 
three, four, five different buttons that people can choose, not in an automated follow-up for a buying, for a, uh, a download. This should be one piece of information, one thing to do. If you have two different things you want them to do, send them two emails, one or two days apart. And then measure results at every step along the way to figure out if the activities in your inbound campaign are delivering the results that you're looking for. To understand if your attraction metrics are working, take a look at your web visitors. Is your traffic going up or down? Take a look at the number of people that are following you on social media. When you're more focused on the engagement metric, take a look at how many people are actually downloading stuff from your website and social media engagement. Are they interacting with you? Are you getting leads, legitimate leads? When you're measuring the productivity of your closing activities, look at how many proposals you're writing, how many sales you're closing, what's your conversion rate? And finally, when it comes to this last phase, track the number of referrals you get, the number of reviews, and repeat business if that makes sense for your business. The trick is, there's a lot of numbers here to measure. Pick a few and measure them consistently and measure them to ensure that you are hitting specific numbers. Back when we were doing lots of live events, I knew that if I had six people in a room, I'd have one customer come out. I knew that if I had 50 people attending webinar, online webinars, I might get five inquiries or conversations. And so I would focus my activities to make sure I had the right number of people coming to the table to make sure that there'd be one customer coming out the other end. Okay, now is a great time to ask questions if you have them. And while you're thinking about the questions, I want to just make you aware of one other thing. We are running a promotion only for people who attend our webinars. If you join today, you can save 20% on your membership in the digital toolbox using the code WEBINAR. 